Brooklyn Independent Television. Imagine a far off land where your greatest fantasies can become reality with the press of a button. Sounds like sci-fi? Well, it isn't in the land of Oz, it's in Brooklyn. We met with the mad scientist in Borum Hill who hatched the MakerBot, this incredible technology which transforms 3D images into reality. I got my photo of Halle Berry in my wallet. I'm Bree Pettis and we're at MakerBot Industries HQ, what we call the Bot Cave. And this is where we pack and ship all the MakerBots as they go out to the world to get made and make things themselves. A MakerBot is an affordable open source 3D printer. You take 3D files and that could be an object of anything, whether it's a teacup or a portrait of somebody's head, and you send it to the machine and it prints it layer by layer. It builds it up out of plastic and creates a 3D model. So it's a machine that can make you almost anything. How long it takes to make an object is dependent on its size. So an object like this, this is Walt Disney's head, uh, this takes about an hour and a half. And obviously things that are smaller will take less time. We have a community online called Thingiverse. And at Thingiverse.com, people upload their digital design files. And every day I check on it to see what wild and wacky and wonderful. And it's always a mix of practicality. Somebody made a doorknob and then beauty. Somebody made a bracelet that's really pretty. So it's a real mix of different kinds of objects that people are making with it. And our goal is basically to bring 3D printing to everybody's desktop and make anything they want in less time than it takes to go to the store. Which, which was better? Was it the Oreo with the Nutter Butter frosting on it, or was it the frosting of the Oreo on the Nutter Butter? Oh, you know, we should... MakerBot was formed from the friendships that were formed at NYC Resistor. Zach, Adam, and I met there and just worked on a bunch of projects together. With some sort of like shoot that it can just insert cookie, grind it up. It's very collaborative at this point. Uh, I primarily work on the firmware and the software. Um, but for instance, when designing this bot, we each had a role. Um, Bree did uh, all of the outer casing design. I worked on the XY stage. Uh, Zach is responsible for all the electronics and the plastruder up here, which actually extrudes the plastic, which builds up the object. One of the things I've worked on recently is a very useful homemade object. So we wanted to design a bottle opener. I decided to use a penny as the, the metal tab that opens the bottle top. And uh, so I sat down and it took me about an hour of just measuring the top of a bottle, making some drawings. So then I open it in this program, OpenSCAD, which allows you to do little 3D models. Uh, take the 3D model, and then you run it through the software called SkinForge, and uh, it basically generates like a CAT scan of your 3D model. It just shows you each layer. So now that we've run it through SkinForge and we have the toolpath, the next step is to send it to the robot and print it. All right, well, now that our bottle opener is finished, all we have to do is pull it off the, the build stage and put our penny into the slot, smash it in there. Okay, there we go, penny's in. And I guess the only thing left is to enjoy a nice cold bottle of Brooklyn's finest. Ta-da! If you're intimidated by, you know, the fact that it's a technology contraption, don't be. You know, if you put together IKEA furniture, you can probably put this together. It, we use the exact same tools. These are all the machines over here that are getting ready to go out. People have bought these and we're packing them up and getting ready to ship them. And this is really where the magic happens. This is where we take all the supplies that are all in these boxes and we assemble them here and then they go into the boxes and then out the door. Then a barcode reader, and basically, this is the whole deal right here. This is where we answer emails back here. And that's it. At MakerBot, we're really proud to be in Brooklyn. Brooklyn has heart. It's a really special place with really special people in it. And so we're just really proud to have our business here. There's this one guy, I believe in Austria, who lost his bath plug for his bathtub. And he wanted to take a bath. So he designed and printed out a bath plug. 
And then he uploaded it to Thingiverse, so everybody else who is missing a bath plug can take a bath also. And I just, I had a little warm feeling. It's like, I've helped people, you know, get clean. That's good. Um, but also, it's fun because it's something so ordinary, and it's not anything I would have anticipated, or anyone here would have anticipated. And for me, that's the exciting part. It's the, you know, we're building a, a platform, a tool for doing other things, and we don't know what it's going to be. Um, it would have been very difficult in the 70s to say what people would be using computers for now, you know. No one would say, oh yeah, you'll use your computer to listen to the radio. That would make no sense to somebody in 1978. And now, of course, it just seems completely ordinary. So up until now, 3D printers have been giant mainframe-sized machines. And the MakerBot sits on your desktop. It's small. And just like the first personal computers that were on your desktop, it's much cheaper than big machines. It's only 950 bucks. You put it together, it takes about a weekend with a friend, and then you've got a machine that can make you almost anything. I really do believe that everyone's going to have a 3D printer in a couple of decades, the same way that everyone has a 2D printer now. If I were to try and sculpt this out of plastic, it would not look like this at all. It would be an awful lump. But with the machine and with this technology, it can do it for you. And all you have to do is, is think it up and design it. And that's a wonderful thing. So if you're interested in MakerBot and you want to check it out, go to MakerBot.com and we've got lots of videos and all sorts of things for you to check out. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.